just a second. I'll Okay. Uh, can you see the presentation now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. James Fenimore Cooper. This is the last unit, and I'll be sharing this unit. Uh, I'll be dealing with two prose selections. One is by James Fenimore Cooper, and the other is. Uh, uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne. Nathaniel Hawthorne. I'll be. I'll try to finish off both these today, and the rest of the units will be covered by Doctor Doctor Melissa Helen. Okay, who will be I think taking the classes after me. In well, drama one is left, sir. In drama I'm, one is left. Drama. In drama one. No. Uh, but I am not doing drama. Right. I am only doing unit one and then poetry. Right. Okay. Got the idea? Yes, sir. I, yeah. I will be dealing with, as I told you at the beginning itself, that each of us will be taking two and a half units. Okay. So I am taking two. I have taken one unit that is the background. Second unit is poetry. We started with Phyllis Whitley, Walt Whitman, Robert Frost. And then prose, you have the two, Fenimore Cooper and Nathaniel Hawthorne. The other thing, Isaac Asimo and uh, other things that will be done by other teachers. Okay. So James Fenimore Cooper, a very popular figure in American literature and also world literature. Fenimore Cooper's most famous book is uh, uh, Deer Slayer and The Last of the Mohicans. Now, The Last of the Mohicans was made into a film, uh, maybe two times, but I think you are familiar with the recent one that was made almost, I think, a decade ago, James Fenimore Cooper's Last of the Mohicans. It's an amazing, it, it's a very interesting film. Of course, uh, they have adapted and changed the novel, okay? Yeah, Fenimore Cooper's name is almost invariably associated with with uh, with uh, the last of the Mohicans, the leather stocking tales. Now, Cooper's stories are about the American frontier. When I was discussing Lincoln, I said that Lincoln's father, Thomas Lincoln, was a frontiersman. Now, what is a frontier? Frontier, as students of American literature must be aware, is the westward movement. When you talk about the eastern colonies, as people began to arrive from Europe and England, they had to clear the forests and they had to move westwards. This, from the Atlantic Recording coast. in progress. Okay. According, uh, now, now see, the Atlantic coast, and from there, the movement was towards the Pacific coast. Pacific coast would be to the west of America, meaning most famous is, you know, you have California and all other places to the west. So this westward movement is called the frontier. This frontier thesis is invariably associated with the American historian, 19th century, Frederick Jackson. Okay. Now, uh, now Jackson's, uh, uh, the significance of the frontier in American history, the significance of frontier in American history, he talks about the belt of territory sparsely occupied by Indian traders, hunter. Record. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What What happened? I was uh, uh, that it said recording stopped and then ended. The uh, you were also. Did you feel yes, the sir. same? We are yes, also. Yes, sir. 
Okay. I now I don't know how many are there now. Okay. Uh, Who is uh, the host here? Yeah. PG R R C D O U. Yes, sir. Uh, University. Can you, can you just tell us what happened? Because see, I had to again come back because you know. Uh, yeah. Actually, what happened, you know, today they have logged in very late, sir. Uh, they will log in uh, early, but uh, you have logged in first, so you became host. They, they have no, to no, 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 I didn't become host, ma. The, I, I was trying to mute, so I didn't didn't have those, you know, uh, functions. So I, I'm, I'm just like uh, all of you, okay? I'm not made the host now. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I think let in us... the middle of the class they cannot record, so they have disconnected it and they have corrected it, sir, to recording. They are recording it now. Yes, sir. See. They record. Yeah, because earlier also it said it's recording. No, sir. It was. No, when I joined, I it said it is recording, and I had to accept. And then anyway, okay, maybe some technical glitch. Let us uh, let me just return to what I started. Uh, where am I now? Yeah. Quickly, please uh, pay attention to what we are discussing because this is the uh, frontier that we are talking about. So now, the so there are three frontiers in American literature. I'm sorry, American history. One is the first frontier is the first settlers. You know the the Native American resistance to expansion, okay? So this is from till 65, uh, 95, sorry. Now, the Iroquois, the Iroquois are the tribes, or they're also called the Iroquois, okay, tribes. Uh, Mohawks, Onon, Onondaga, Oneida, Cayuga, Seneca, Tuscarora, these are the six nations, and they made a treaty with the settlers. The second frontier is the Louisiana Purchase, which you know they purchased from the French. That's why it was named after King Louis, Louisiana. Western half of the Mississippi River Basin purchased in 1803 from France. The third frontier from 1840 to 1890, it's called the Oregon Trail. Oregon Trail is, you know, the great ca caravans which were moving from the east to the west towards the Californian coast. Later on, you know, the uh, Union Pacific, okay, the great railroads which were, you know, uh, laid by the, uh, you know, through the different states connecting East, West, North, South. Okay, so in the in the you know in the United States when you are taking an interstate, okay, a road, usually now it is the North, South, and the East, West. So the roads are going from North to South and East to West. Okay, right. Uh, well, they are called interstates, not the national highway as we have. They are called interstates. Okay connecting one state with another state, right? Why I talked about the frontier is that frontier refers to the encounter between the Western, you know, European call, uh, settlers who came and then the native populations, the uh, thousands of tribes which were already there, there were wars and they made treaties. So you will find all this Frontier experience. Many of the Europeans were friends with the Native Americans. They were on friendly terms. It was a kind of a sometimes give and take. Okay. They lived together, hunted, you know, and they were mountain men, trappers, meaning people who uh, hunted and people who were in the, involved in the fur trade. Some of you must have. Um, I watched this very important film, which was also about, you know, climate uh, change, ecology, and all. 
uh, Leonardo DiCaprio uh, acted in that film and then he had a long conversation with uh, Barack Obama. Uh, this is called Revenant. Anyone here who watched the film The Revenant? Anyone? Okay, no. The Revenant is about people hunting for pelts. Pelts are the skins. So, yeah. So, keep this in mind. And uh, this is the... Can you see the map? Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. So, there are... It will help you to keep... Uh, you know, uh, you can remember this as you read American literature or, you know, when you think of America and its history. The 13 original colonies from Maine to the north to Georgia in the south, right? So there are New England colonies, Maine, New Hampshire, okay, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, okay, and uh, Connecticut, okay? The New Island, New England colonies and middle colonies are in, uh, you know, New York, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, all are. And then the southern colonies, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and, and Georgia. Well, now this is the frontier. Now the red color, the line that you see is the, the frontier. Okay, of course, the northern part is province of Quebec and other now form part of Canada. Okay, now the conflict was uh, 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 around this line, okay, wherein people moving to the west encountered the resistance by the Native Americans. Fenimore Cooper, uh, now he came from uh, an illustrious family, okay? Uh, the famous Cooper family, his father was a judge, okay? Uh, now, and Cooperstown is named after their family, Cooperstown in New York. And he had the influences of Quaker mother. His mother, okay, was a Quaker. We already talked about Quakers when we discussed Puritans. And, uh, well, two other colonies, the Rhode Island colony by Roger Williams and Pennsylvania by William Penn. Cooper is remembered for what is called as a patrician Democrat, meaning uh, though he was a Democrat, he believed in this kind of, a, you know, uh, privileges of the aristocrat. So aristocratic reactionary is a term that is used. And is also seen as a founding father or founding figure of American historical novel. Now, what does a historical novel do? A historical novel explores the contradictions and of any society. Here, it is the American society in a time of profound change. A writer who writes about the changing times with a understanding of the dynamics of those changes is called a historical novelist or the great realist. Now, if you take the a uh, great Russian novelist like Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, you know, Gogol, Turgenev, Pushkin, uh, all of them, you know, Chekhov, they wrote about the transformation that was coming over their societies. War and Peace by Tolstoy or Anna Karenina uh, or the Tales of Sebastopol. Amazing narratives about the great changes that were coming over the Russian society. Now, according to George Lukács, now Lukács is a Hungarian Marxist uh, uh, thinker, a historical novel emerged. Can anyone read this for me, please? According to the George Lukacs, the historical novel emerged in a moment of national and social transformation and constituted an effort to understand the present 
as formed by the past to link the formation of the nation to its history and cooper developed and popularized such widely diverse literary forms as the sea novel the novel of manners poems are subjected to rigorous dramatic analysis thank you rigorous dramatic analysis now one who can understand okay and the characters are constituted by the historical peculiarities of their age now the characters in a historical novel they actually tell us or they are shaped by the tendencies of a particular time and cooper in american context is considered to be one of the important writers you know in this particular tradition so he uh, inaugurated and popularized these diverse forms uh literary uh, narratives which talked about the contemporary times the sea novel or the novel of manners or the dynastic novel which covers many generations now uh the most important uh, fictional character that fenimo cooper created is that of natty bumpo okay now natty bumpo is uh, uh, the hero of leather stocking tales now the hero himself a neutral ground to the extent that he his actions and allegiances provide an opportunity for opposing social forces to be brought into human relationships with one another the moral landscape he negotiates is the place of crisis and collision and that crisis and collision are expressed in personal as well as social terms as a function of character as well as even now the point here is the character the central character here nati through him the writer presents the various conflicts between you know differing different forces social forces so the conflict takes a personal form but it also is happening in the larger dynamics of the changing times now the leather stocking tales are actually five novels uh which is about a frontiers man in the primarily former okay iroquois areas in the central new york now the new york new york was actually they, it belonged it people who lived there were the iroquois and uh, uh even on the ellis island and liberty island where the statue of liberty is that also was used uh by the by the uh, native americans by various tribes for ceremonial purposes that's what we read so what are the five major works which deal with an character of uh, nati bumpo now nati bumpo is given different names uh leather stocking pathfinder the trapper deer slayer the long rifle okay and the hawkai so these are the names of different names of the same character and uh, this character is raised by the indians indians who are the indians in the american context a quick answer native americans native americans good well so raised by indians he is a brother and also a comrade of okay chingachgook okay who is a mohican mohican is a tribe and uh, he is a complex character and cooper explores human experience in the context of historical events and contemporary history even in this narrative of eclipse also you find cooper close attention to the detail and what's happening and we find a sympathetic portrayal of indigenous tribes it could be because of the quaker influence of his mother because the quakers uh you know they 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 were very they had different uh, belief systems they so they talked about brotherhood and also uh, in the most of the quakers were all abolitionists 
Quakers were against slavery. So Quakers also, uh, you know, Pennsylvania, you know, Penn, he made a contract with the Native Americans and uh, their relationships with the Native Americans were very, very cordial and very humane. And America is Eden or wilderness. We already discussed this. And what form of society is needed in the new world? That is the question that these, uh, you know, the, the, on the one hand, you have the Russo's noble savage. And there is this Puritan, you know, understanding of the Native Americans as the devil. Okay. So the point is there is an ambivalence and Cooper, you know, is trying to, you know, understand actually the, the, the other that is the Native American. So, yeah, these are the pioneers, last of the Mohicans. Recordings, recording in progress. Okay. Yeah. Now, the story, the eclipse, the story is there in your, uh, uh, in your reader, I think, and you also, it's also available on the, on, online. Now, the eclipse was published in 1869 issue of Patman's monthly magazine, posthumously. Posthumous means after the death of the author. It is about, uh, you know, it is set in Ostego count, uh, you know, county, county. Uh, you have counties in, uh, in America, okay? Uh, uh, Bibb County, Aiken County, okay? Uh, Lafayette County, different counties. So it is in Ostego County, New York. And Lake Ostego, Lake Ostego, the headwaters of, uh, okay, the Susquehanna River. Now, one thing that you need to remember is most of the place names in America are derived from the Native American uh, names. Some of them are very, uh, you can immediately uh, realize, like the word Massachusetts, okay, is from the Massasoit. We all know, and Wyoming, Ohio, uh, Idaho, Mississippi, all these uh, are names which came from the Native American uh, place names. Got the idea? Okay. You will be wondering why such names in America, because these names are Native American place names, okay? Right. Uh, Walter Nova, okay, and things like that. Now, the eclipse is, we all know that, the what is this narrative about? Narrative about is, narrative is about an eclipse. Now, people understood eclipse in a different way before the scientific understanding of the eclipse. People feared eclipses. Even now, people are afraid of eclipse. Solar eclipse. Yeah? Yes, sir. Right. So all this is pre-science. People didn't know what exactly was happening during the eclipse. They thought something was, you know, some celestial uh, powers were at hand. But we all know about the coming in between. Now, when these three uh, orbs, the sun, the moon, and the earth are in a particular alignment, we know that there is an eclipse. But eclipse played a great role. Now, what is the effect of eclipse on a colony? Right? So, it's an amazing study in the effect of eclipse on people, on the landscape, on the livestock, on the animals. And also, it's not merely about the external you know, uh, impact, but also the psychological impact. And there is also a story here. There is also a dramatization here about somebody to be hanged. Okay, So a hanging is to be, take place. A very interesting 
narrative that Fenimo Cooper makes here. Can anyone read this? Please, yeah. The eclipse of the sun, which you have requested me to describe, occurred in the summer of 1806 on Monday, the 16th of June. Its greatest depth of shadow fell upon the American continent, somewhere above the latitude of 42 degrees. I was then on a visit to my parents at the home of my family among the highlands of Otsigo in that part of the country where the eclipse was most impressive. My recollections of the great event and the incidents of the day are as vivid as if they had occurred but yesterday. Thank you. Now, the narrator, who is, it's an autobiographical thing, that is, Fenimo Cooper remembers that it was 1806 and 16th of June, the great eclipse which fell on the American continent, the shadow fell on the American continent and gives the exact latitude and all. And he was on a visit to his parents on the highlands of Ostego and where the eclipse would be very, very, you know, vivid. Uh, when was the eclipse, of complete solar eclipse, 2018 or 17? 2018, I think, right? Uh, can anyone help me here? Last, yes, sir. 2018, yeah. 2018, I was, yeah, I, I was in US at that time. And I remember that they, the schools and, you know, universities was provided with these uh, uh, glasses for all to you know, watch the eclipse. So now, uh, the eclipse is vividly recalled. What is vivid? Very, very clear. Yes. And as though it has occurred only yesterday. Of course, we all know that memory is so fresh, right? Pictures fade. Maybe your hard drive gets corrupted and you are not able to see those pictures. But the mind, you know, uh, your human mind has such a capacity, right? There is no problem of space, right? You don't need to actually uh, format it or delete or whatever. So the freshness of memories. And what exactly is the narrative about? I'll quickly go through this. It is recollection of events, right? What happened? It is about the eclipse, the description proper of the eclipse a vivid description of life and landscape. Then, in the colonies, the, we are also given a glimpse of the judicial and the educational system in the colony. Some, and there is a spectacle of public execution. At that point of time, executions were public, meaning there were public hangings. So societies were not very civilized by then. So uh, the, the executions were public, public execution, hanging off those who are convicted. But never have I beheld such agony clinging to life, such mental horror at the nearness of death. Within the narrative, this is a minor narrative. What is this minor narrative? This minor narrative is about the con convict who would be executed, but because of the eclipse, you know, his execution will take place at some other time. And the effect of the eclipse on the death, on the consciousness of the convict and the agony of clinging to life. Nobody wants to die, right? And that's why capital punishment is considered to be very cruel, okay? In many parts of the world, capital punishment is uh, not there. In, in America, it is still there, but in some states, uh, executions do not take place. 
most of the conservative the, most of the republicans the, uh, the, excuse me just a second most of the republican states they have executions and most of the democrats they wherever the governors are democrats there is there are no executions you know that america being a federal you all know that as students of american literature a law in one state is not not the same in another state you are familiar with this yes sir in some state you may get a capital punishment you may be you may get a death death sentence maybe in georgia but maybe in in california you don't have that same crime and uh, laws in america are very federal laws meaning every state even your driving license though you are you can drive throughout america but again you have certain uh, certain uh, differences okay uh, so the point here is that execution and in britain there is no execution in many european countries there is no death sentence uh, there is only life sentence not death sentence life sentence means it's total life sentence meaning not like uh, few years and coming out life sentence in britain and europe means the convict is till his death or her death is in the prison uh, they don't have death sentence but america does have uh, the it's still on the statutes the prisoner uh with reprieve a uh, description of the prison now the prisoner is his uh, the execution is postponed and there is a vivid description of the prison okay and uh, what an agony for somebody waiting to be pardoned waiting to be executed knowing the time of one's own death i think that's terrible right not knowing when you die is different but knowing the exact date and time of your death is uh, i think very 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 cruel yes or no that's how i feel yeah anyway now the effect of eclipse on humans animals and landscape how the eclipse affects all these three it's a very beautiful description description and the moral effect of eclipse on the spirituality of the people how they are made humble before god because uh sun being eclipsed any great event is attributed okay that something happens something of cosmic significance happens that is how understood so naturally people <coughs> use this opportunity to reflect on their own a littleness of their own insignificance in the in the wider scheme of things so one thing that you need to focus while reading the narrative is the narrative technique of imagery that is used and then the narrative is very very lyrical okay so these are the things that you need to think about about the eclipse okay